Hello, just to try and make a brief, um, but a, a video recently was asked a question about what's called like the ancient um, handbags, or I would refer to them more probably as farming buckets. And uh, and it was think Drake uh, Doros, Dorosh asked the question, but um, as I was researching something else, uh, looking in back into Kersha and the Sistrum and some other things, which I'll, I'll get to that, uh, get back on that project straight after this I just thought I'd do this quickly and just to do a comparison so as we'll see uh, fertile lands through irrigation that's what I would lean towards um, that these symbols mean and the reason I come to that conclusion is because um, Athanasius Kirscher, uh well he's a early Egyptologist hermeticist uh, Jesuit very pro uh, pro prolific writer um, illustrator, very, very uh, hermetic, esoteric uh, themes running throughout his um, his works, including well, alchemy, uh, gods, goddesses, symbolism, uh, town planning, architecture, and these themes which um, fascinate me. But for instance, this is one of his uh, uh, from uh, uh, I forget the ter uh, the name of it, but it's like one of his uh, before the Rosetta Stone. And before Egyptology really become popular, people uh, such as Kersha were looking into it. And there's even some suggestion uh, because there are some of these carvings and that hieroglyphs were maybe understood by a few before the Rosetta Stone amongst these uh, secret societies. Let's call them. And and that's well, why? How did the Hermeticists come across this? sudden blossoming of knowledge in regards to engineering architectural weights and measures especially and that's what I think well uh, because at the time it was very dangerous to talk about astronomy arithmetic geometry and music and Kirscher was you know uh, neck deep in these topics as were other hermeticists Kunraf, John D, uh, Mikkel Sparker and these other guys uh, did some series on them uh, and their symbols and their writings would had to well, had to be done very simple like it's it's sort of pretty much well known Nostradamus wrote in mirror script and it was necessary to do these sorts of things and to write in a certain code to to hide your writings because well it was a very dangerous time Giordano Bruno got burned at the stake uh, and lots and lots of other people for being heretics in that they opposed the the right of kings and the the uh, alleged uh, truth proposed by the church, but that's something else. Uh, okay, here's some from his work on Egyptology, but the Sistrum, and of course, he's done, I've mentioned Michael Sparker in regards to the musical modes, Dorian, Ionian, uh, Phrygian, Lydian, etc. He was uh, very much into these, it wasn't just about symbols, he was uh, a man of, what, what probably best term, a man of science, and into, well, weights and measures or quadrivium. But uh, this is a piece, so I'm um, talking about Isis and, well, like Isis and the Sistrum. So the, that's this instrument here and, and Isis, Hathor, um, Horus and Osiris is what I'm looking into now because of, well, and that's, okay, next, there'll be the next uh, video soon enough. But even we see um, Diana series, uh, Ju Juno, uh, Venus, Minerva, Isis, the F was a S back in those days, uh, Luna, Hecat, um, all, all these other guys. But it's also, well, what's she holding in her other hand? We see this pale, and it's uh, Fecunditas qua fe quitor terum irrigatum, uh, part of my Latin. But if we zoom in on it, so what we have, well, fecund is, uh, and terum and irrigatum, that's, Fecund basically means uh, fertile, childbearing, um, or even can be extended to a, a, a fecund um, soil, but a terum, land irrigation. And that's what I would suggest that these symbols mean. We'll have a look at uh, childbearing, fertile, and irrigated land. Now, irrigation, I think that's, uh, this would be my thinking on what this means. Well, uh, fertility and irrigation and so we have these uh, images uh, uh, Babylonian back to uh, Mesopotamian era 
where even we see a well a tree like a very like the tree of life essentially uh and that it's bearing fruit as well in the pine cone um or the fruit now it's often referred to as a pine cone but it, it could but we again we see holding this pail so just similar now uh, i'm going to call it a pail or a bucket um, that's what i believe that it is and so here we get a close-up of it and the Giroft culture and uh, Harata in Iran we see there are lots of these in there as well very similar depiction but I would also propose um, that these are also symbols uh, and I'd like to get information on it it's a big area of study but I would suggest that uh, they have a standard weight amongst these because firstly I uh, a bucket of water or a uh, amphora was a standard use so they would have like a sacred vessel whether it was a bucket or an amphora it would be filled with water and that would be the standard uh, weight of that particular culture the Greeks Romans and many other people did it it really does cross time cross cultures and so then to, to once so once you establish you have your sacred vessel you fill it with water to the top and there you have your weight. Now then you can build stone um, objects such as this which are uh, equal to that weight and then they can be distributed and you distribute the sacred weight around and so each town, each market, each etc. would have one of these. Now that all would all depend on the weights and I haven't looked into it so that's pure speculation at the moment but uh, just so often it comes up so that these symbols, you know what it, standard, if you see something like this uh, standard archaeological response is it's a religious fetish or it's a religious artifact so well I, I, I they were very they, they built civilizations cultures laws systems uh, very clever you know they, they then they did a lot with a little and and I think that's one of the ways we need to you know to think like we live in a disposable culture where everything has a uh, short-term use only one use and it doesn't really you know doesn't have a multiple usage that's what I well these things I believe would and the sacred weights and measures is also important because still we have that myth of the king king's foot being where we define the foot but you see it uh, I don't want to go through it but other you know the uh, pharaoh the king's scepter and orb all these symbols are royalty essentially the symbols of uh, their power to define the law to define trade to define the weights of coins etc and these let's call them you know sacred objects would be a reflection of that okay but again that's just my thoughts on on this but that is uh based on uh well the the symbolism of weights and measures as it passes through crosses cultures such as the caduceus being a measuring rod and we see it in egypt, egypt with both um ningishida in Sumer, and again cross time cross cultures where we have the the god of knowledge and of language is also the god of weights and measures okay and but well again we what are we really seeing here i would say it's a symbol of fertility they're picking fruit uh the, the, they've made the land fertile and so this same uh bucket or handbag which could be used uh, you know to distribute as a watering you know to water the crops could also be used to collect the crops no different you know to to what a pail or a, or a bucket still has what farmers use now multiple uses um as well and if the bucket is set to a certain size you could also use it as a uh, you know um, if you're selling or buying okay bring me my bucket fill it with water put it on the pan scale versus this guy's shipment of fruit we can test it to see if it is the true weight of what it claims to be multiple uses for the same object uh, rather than consumerist disposable single use type of items different mentality ancient versus modern uh, but the Olmec culture also has this uh, faint, you know, this is another famous depiction. Again, he's carrying this bag, uh, very similar, and again, just to highlight it. Uh, but another place where it's found is also in Gobleke Tepe, this very ancient site, at least 12,000 years old, probably older than that. And even people will argue this way and that we, you know, it's hard to tell, we don't really know. But the general consensus, even amongst the establishment, is that it, it was uh, something of a centre of distribute, you know, so farming, animal husbandry emerged from Gobleki Tepe. Now it's interesting that the domesticated animals such as goats, sheep, 
uh, etc. That we're also you know the, the basis of our whole pretty much our farming uh, also emerged from around about this area around about the same time. There's also evidence of uh, the copper trade um, emerging about that time because we see from not far from um, wherever wherever rivers the uh, uh, twin rivers emerge. We also we see we find um, very ancient copper, even uh, the 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 ore distributed uh, around there as well. So, as it's uh, said that this was a centre of innovation of farming, animal husbandry, husbandry metallurgy, and these type of um, things. So, well, that's got to. I'd also say, well, farming. What's the first thing? You, whether it's if you if you want to build a city, what's the first thing you need? Water. If you're farming, what's the first thing you need? Is water. If you're raising livestock, what's what do you need? Water. And so this is one of the famous um, T pillars, and there we see the same symbol um, again. And so, uh, unlike uh, a, a nomad that wouldn't carry water, it's very heavy. You know, have this this bucket swinging around. You know, um, you might carry a, a a skin of water, but a, a a bucket or a pail like this is really something probably more that a more that a settled person would use now of course nomads could use this type of item but uh it would you know it would point to more of a settled culture um i would think but not you know it doesn't exclude that but so again we see this um these symbols emerging and again so um back to kirsch's drawing he describes it as you know as fertility uh and irrigation of the land now, what do all these cultures have in common? Um, now, this is this is not an ancient drawing. This is, but uh, it's still relevant. What does Egypt, what what made Egypt special? The Nile, but not just the Nile. Also, Narig, uh, irrigation. They were masters at hydrology. They knew how to collect the water, gather the water, measure the water, and for farming, for fertility, to make the land fertile. The same with uh, Sumerians, Babylonians, and the Mesopotamian culture, uh, uh, especially on um, down towards southern Iraq, and also the Giroft cult in, in Iran, um, which also has those weighted bags on, uh, or blocks uh, earlier, uh, Gobleki Tepe, and in the Olmecs. Now, what's also important is once you have a civilization, you also need standardized laws, and one of those first laws you need is standardized weights and measures for trade. For taxation, uh, for uh, land division, all the, you can't just like our trade system could not do without standard weights, measures, and laws in regards to that. Neither could an ancient civilization. That's why Foth, Hermes, Mercury, and so many of these other gods, Nuwa and Fuzi in China, are connected to geometry, uh, language skills, science, and well, weights and, and measures being um, emerging from these things. And so, obviously, this is just uh, in, re in respect to a question. I can't answer this, but I, uh, in my mind, I think at least, you know, using Occam's razor, what connects all of them? What's the usage of this particular item? What can it be used for? And I would say it's, uh, as Kirsch's state, you know, um, Fecundus, well, an era, a fertile land irrigation, a, fer, a land of fert, uh, fertile land through irrigation. These civilizations were places of, fer, you know, they, they were farming, uh, they were raising animals, and that's what I would think that would be at least the most reasonable. Um, and but again, I can't say for sure, but that's that would be my thinking. Okay, there's some of the. Uh, so handbag stone but again i'd say that they're weights but or also used for weights not not a single usage but a multiple usage and anyway that's so anyway i hope you enjoyed um that that would be my uh thoughts on it again um i i can't read cuneiform and all these other texts and i don't have access to all the um um, museum vaults or whatever but that uh, just a thought and so anyway with that hope you enjoyed and have a good one